Education Mobile, quality e-learning experience on the go. Good day everyone, you're welcome to Fusion Mobile e-learning clinic. I'm Miss Ido Lydia and I'll be taking you on commerce. Now we're we'll looking at some topics um, which I have here on the screen. Foreign trade and foreign trade documents and means of payment. In our previous lessons, we've talked about foreign trade and I said foreign trade can also be said to be an international trade and it involves buying and selling of goods and services between two or more countries. And I also said um, foreign trade is divided into three uh, parts, the imports, the exports and the intraports. Now we'll be looking at the types of foreign trade together. Like I said, the divisions of foreign trade are the imports, the exports, and the intraports. Now we'll be looking at the types together. Now let's see what we have on the screen. Now you can see we have division and we have types. I said earlier on that foreign trade or international trade is divided into three. It has three divisions, the exports, the imports, and the intraports. Now the types. Foreign trade or international trade is divided into two, the bilateral trade and the multilateral trade. You can see the difference, the divisions and the type. The division has to do with the export, the import and the intraport, while the types of um, foreign or international trade is the bilateral trade and the multilateral trade. Now the bilateral trade is the buying and selling of goods and services between just two countries. It has to do with two countries, for example, the buying and selling of goods and services between um, Nigeria and China. It involves just two countries. While multilateral trade or multilater multilateral trade involves buying and selling of goods and services between many countries. Now, Nigeria can decide to buy goods from Dubai, from Ghana, from US, or from UK at the same time. So multilateral, um, multilateral is the buying and selling of goods and services between many countries, while bilateral trade is the act of buying and selling of goods and services between just two countries. Now, reasons for foreign trade. Let's look at the reasons why people or countries decide to do foreign trade. Countries go into um, foreign trade for various reasons. Some of the reasons are here. We have differences in technology. We have differences in skills. We have differences in natural resources. Differences in climatic condition. And in order for them to improve their standard of living. So let's talk about the differences in technology. Some, um, um, the level of technology in, in, in various countries differs. Like some countries have, have better technology compared to other countries. Now, differences in skills. Now, some countries have more skills than the less, uh, some of the advanced countries have more skills than the less developed country. For example, some expatriates in building, people that construct roads and the oil industries, they have more skills more than the less developed countries. So this can necessitate foreign trade. Now, looking at natural resources, differences in natural resources. Some countries are, don't have natural resources. So natural resources can also necessitate foreign trade. For example, Nigeria has crude oil, Ghana has um, gold, and um, South Africa has diamonds. So the differences in their nat natural resources can bring about foreign trade. Now, let's talk about the climatic condition. The climatic condition of countries varies. So, climatic condition can also necessitate foreign trade. Now, improvement in standard of living. For Nigeria to improve in their standard of living, they have to do what? Go into foreign trade. So, for less developed countries like, the, uh, the, like Ghana, like Liberia, to improve in their standard of living, they have to go into what? Foreign trade. Now, let's go through the advantages and disadvantages of foreign trade together. Now, we ha I have them here right on the screen. Now, it increases revenue. Foreign trade or international trade increases revenue. For instance, Nigeria gets 90% of, uh, of her revenue from the oil industry, from sale of oil. Now, the other one is 
employment, foreign trade increases or improves employment. Now in Nigeria we have quite a number of foreign um, organizations here in Nigeria, for example, MTN, Shell and likes like that are foreign organization and it helps provide employment for the citizens of Nigeria. Now skills acquisition. Through international trade, new ideas, new skills and techniques can be acquired to produce quality goods and products. Now, foreign exchange. Foreign trade serves as a means of foreign exchange between many countries. Now, natural resources. Foreign trade helps in equitable distribution of natural resources. For instance, some countries that um, don't have the kind of natural resources Nigeria has, Nigeria can make those natural resources available to them and they can make use of it to produce products. Now, increased standard of living. Foreign trade or international trade helps improve the standard of living of countries. Now, the disadvantages of foreign trade is um, dumping, competition, cultural alteration, import, uh, importing of harmful goods over dependent on foreign goods. Now, some of these well-developed countries dump some of their fake products and substandard products in the less developed countries. So these countries now become dumping ground for their products. It leads to competition between the well-developed countries and the less developed countries in a way that the, the, the foreign countries, the foreigner comes to a particular country to, to create companies and the, the infant in the, it becomes a threat to the infant industries in such a way that they won't be able to compete with their quality products. It leads to cultural alteration. The less developed countries embraces the, the, the culture of of the foreigners and neglect their own culture. So foreign trade leads to cultural alteration. It also leads to importation of harmful goods. For example, importation of fake goods, of expired goods, of contraband and all that. Now it leads to over dependence on foreign goods. Some of these less developed countries depend more on the foreign um, goods. They are so over dependent on the foreign goods and they fail to make use of their, their natural resources to produce goods for the use of their citizens. Now, we we'll are looking at balance of trade and balance of payment of a country. Now, when we talk about balance of trade, it is the total value of goods sold and goods bought in a country within a year, within a particular period, which is usually a year. Balance of trade is the total value of goods sold and plus, you can see it, I indicated it here, total value of goods sold plus goods bought within a particular period, which is usually a year. And we have what we call the positive balance of trade, which is called the favorable balance of trade and the negative balance of trade, which is the unfavorable balance of trade. Now, when we talk about the favorable balance of trade, it means when a country is exporting more than it is importing, it is called favorable balance of trade. But when a country is importing more than it is exporting, it is called the unfavorable balance of trade. I hope you get that. Now, balance of payments is a record or a statement showing a country's total receipts and the country's total payments within a particular period which is usually a year. Now, we also have the favorable balance of payments and the unfavorable balance of payments, which is also known as the negative balance of payments. When we talk about the favorable balance of payments, it means the country's receipt is greater than the country's total payment. So when a country's receipt is greater than a country's total payment, the country is said to have favorable balance of payments. Then when a country's total payments the total money they are paying out to other countries, when it is greater than the receipts, it is called unfavorable balance of payments, which is also known as the negative balance of payments. Now, I said uh, balance of trade is the total value of goods sold plus goods bought, the goods bought in a particular period, which is usually a year. And we also have the favorable balance of trade and the unfavorable balance of trade. 
Now, I also said the balance of payments of a country is the total receipt of a country plus the total payments. That makes up the co a country's balance of payments. And I said the, uh, a, the balance of payments also has the, unfavor uh, the favorable balance of payments and the unfavorable balance of payments, which is when a country's total receipt is greater than the country's total payments, that is favorable balance of payments. But when the total payment of a country is greater than the receipts, that means the country is having a what? A, an unfavorable balance of payments. Now, we'll be looking at the, the next topic we have here, which is tariffs or restriction of trade. So let's quickly run through that together. Now, we'll, let's talk about tariffs. Tariffs is a kind of tax. And what is tax? Tax is a, is a compulsory level imposed by a government, by government of a country on its citizens. Now, I said tax is a compulsory levy. So, tariffs is also a compulsory levy on import and export of goods. Now, what is tariffs? Tariffs is a form of tax or duties imposed by the government of a particular country on import and export of goods. Now, the idea of tariffs is, um, is to help boost the, um, the economy of a country because tax is a form of revenue to a country. Now, we'll be looking at the, the next we have on the line, restriction to trade. Restrictions are tools used by the government of a country to control international trade. So, the forms of, um, um, of restriction of trade are as follows. Now we have the import duties or tariffs, we have foreign exchange control, trade can be controlled by reducing foreign exchange, we have devaluation, we have import monopoly, we have import quota, we have preferential duties, we have SIS duties, reduction. So that's that for restriction of trade. Now we'll be looking at the terms of trade. Terms of trade is the rate at which a country's exports exchange for its imports. Now we have the formula on the board. The index of an export price all over the index of an import price times 100 over 1. The, in, the index of an export price all over index of an import price times 100 over 1. Now we're, we're going to be um, looking at the principles of comparative cost advantage. The principles of comparative cost advantage. This principle was propounded by David Ricardo in 19th century. It was propounded by David Ricardo in 19th century. And the principle states that a country derives mutual benefits from trade when they specialize in the production of those commodities with comparative cost advantage. Should I come again? A country derives mutual benefits from trade when they specialize in the production of those commodities in which they have comparative cost advantage in exchange for commodities with cost disadvantage. Now, in other words, a country should export goods they can produce cheaply in exchange for goods that would have costed them more to produce. So that's that about comparative cost advantage. It was propounded by David Ricardo in the 19th century and the principle states that a country derives mutual benefits from trade and specializes in the production of those commodities with cost advantage. Now we have here on the screen types of international trade documents. Now international or foreign trade documents are documents used to facilitate international trade. And they have one, I have um, them here right on the screen. I have like 1 to 20. So they have one, the consular invoice, the bill of lading, the certificate of origin, the shipping notes, airway bills, in debt, ship manifests, mates receipts, freight notes, customs specification, dock warrants, dock lading accounting, bills of sites, bills of entry, Calling forward notes, license, export invoice, ship reports, insurance certificates, and bill of exchange. So these are international trade documents. Now let's do a quick recap of the definition of these 
documents. Then the first one is the consular invoice. The consular invoice is an invoice issued in the embassy of the important country showing the original price of the goods in the country of origin. Now the other one is bill of lading. Bill of lading is a document which contains the details of goods being sent. It is a document of title to goods which are sent across two countries. It is an evidence of shipment and a document of title to, to claim goods. Now the third one is certificate of origin. Certificate of origin is a document signed by a custom officer of the exporting country to show the country from which the goods have been exported or where it is originated from. Now the, uh, the fourth one is the shipping note. The shipping note is a document sent to the shipping agent by the exporter. The fifth one is the airway bill. Airway bill is a numbered document made out by or on behalf of the consignor of goods to be transported by air freight. The sixth one is indent. Indent is the document used in international trade. It is an order to buy goods conveyed by an importer to a potential supplier. Shipping manifest. Shipping manifest is the document to be completed by the captain of a ship and lodged with custom authorities before the ship can leave the port. Mate receipt. Mate receipt is a document used when goods are loaded on the ship by lighter. This is usually signed by an authorized officer of the ship stating that the goods are received in good condition. Export invoice. An export invoice is a document sent by the exporter to the importer giving full description or complete summary of the goods dispatched. Ship report. Ship report is a document which must be supplied by the master of the ship of the custom authorities on arrival at a port. Freight note. Freight note is a document which shows the carriage charges for a particular cargo for a specified journey. Custom specification. Custom specification is a document lodged with the custom authorities which shows the value of goods exported and the country to which they have been consigned. Dock warrant. Dock warrant is a receipt for goods delivered and stored in the warehouse. It entitles the order to take possession of goods. Dock lading account. The dock lading account is a document issued to the master of the ship on its arrival at the port. The, the, the ship is given a reference number and information on cargo together with particulars of any damaged goods. Bill of Sight. Bill of Sight is a document used in the import trade where importers are requested to complete the appropriate entry document if there is insufficient information about the cargo to determine correct duty in advance. Bill of Entry Bill of Entry is a foreign document which contains detailed particulars of all imported goods into the country. Calling Forward Notes Calling Forward Notes is a document sent by a shipping country to forward agent stating the date which the goods must arrive at the dock for loading. License License allows the importer to bring a certain quantity of foreign goods into a country and to purchase foreign exchange. Insurance certificate. Insurance certificate shows that the exporter has paid for insurance to protect him against risks. And the last one, which is bill of exchange. Bill of exchange is an unconditional order in writing addressed by one, excuse me, addressed by one person to another and signed by the person to whom it is addressed to pay on demand at or at a fixed or determinable future time a sum certain in money to the order of a specified person. So that's all about international trade documents. 
Now we'll proceed to means of payments. Now we have the first one, we have mail transfer, we have traveler's check, we have the bank draft, we have the foreign bill of exchange. Now let's look through the definitions together. Mail transfer is a means of payment in which an order to pay a foreign creditor a sum of money is given by a bank to its foreign agent by means of letter or airline. The other one we have traveler's check. Traveler's check are orders drawn on commercial bank which travelers and businessmen to other countries can use to settle their bills. The third one is bank, bank draft. Bank draft is a check drawn on a bank by itself or its agent. It is used by a debtor when his creditor is not willing to accept a personal check. The last one, which is foreign bill of exchange. This is a bill of exchange which is used for making payments arising from international trade. There are some regulatory agencies of the government in charge of foreign trade and they are Customs Authority, the Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria, that's the FAAN, the Nigerian Port Authority, the MPA, and lastly the Nigerian Export Promotion Council, the NEPC. So these are the government agencies in charge of foreign trade. Okay, now let's quickly run through this. We talked about foreign trade and foreign trade documents and means of payment. We talked about the definition of foreign trade, which is the um, exchange of goods and services between two or more countries. We talked about reason for trade, the advantages and disadvantages. We, talk ab we talked about the balance of trade and balance of payments. We talked about tariffs or restriction of trade, the terms of trade, the principles of comparative cost advantage. We talked about the types of international trade documents, the means of payment, and lastly, government authorities. So right now, some questions will be displayed on the screen in order for you to evaluate yourself. And if you have any question, you, you please replay.